Hi, this is Sean Morris, Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, and today I'm just going to do a quick uh, little look at the material library. So, if you've ever been on your Evaluate tab and you want to check out your mass properties here, um, one of the more important things is going to be the density. So that's going to be something set by the material choice you made. Uh, without uh, accurate density, then obviously our mass is going to be off, but so is our center of, center of mass if we're going to be in um, assemblies and all of our axes of inertia, inertia and moments of inertia, those will all be off. Um, it's very important to set a material if you want to actually have this information uh, because the density that is used by default is the density of water, which most of us are not designing in. Okay, so um, pretty easy to set a material. You probably have done this before. If you right click where it's uh, material over here, it might actually look something like that when you, uh, depending on your templates. But you can go and grab any of your favorites or you can hit edit material and you'll get into the SOLIDWORKS material database. So um, there's a lot of materials in here just under SOLIDWORKS materials. I think it's about 450. Um, there's the DIN materials, so those German standards as well. Um, but um, there is you know, a number of uh, materials in here, but they're not obviously going to always fit exactly what you want to use, especially if you have specific uh, material information from a vendor or something like that. So how do you uh, go ahead and get other materials in here? Uh, well, there's an area called your custom material library. So it's actually very easy. Um, if you right click anywhere in here, you can add in a new library. And what's we'll called, yeah, new library or something. So you can have a new library for storing in there. Uh, you can add in new categories. So let's call this a new material category or something like that. And you can finally add in new materials. So you can just go ahead and bring in a new material. So um, you need to do this if you want to have any control over the material properties themselves. So if I go back into those other materials here, so let's just go grab one of these steels here. Um, all, they're going to have material properties, but everything's grayed out. I can't make any changes to that. Um, there's other things in here as well. Um, appearance, this is just how it's going to show up in SOLIDWORKS, so how shiny, what colors are going to be, things like that. Cross hatching, that's going to be when we do section uh, cuts or section views in our drawings. Um, custom like properties that you want to just move around with here. Um, this is coming into our um, sustainability and costing kind of things over there and then you can add it to your favorites as well. Um, one of those th the things to really uh, notice on here too is that you can see that some of this, uh, you can see where some of this information is coming in, so this custom information. Um, so if you're using this for your uh, costing information, uh, you do want to notice that I think this is all from 2012. That may be uh, accurate enough for you. Okay, so uh, if you want to change it, we already saw that you need to come in here and make a new material. If you want to change anything on any of these tabs, uh, probably you're going to want to be changing these properties. So you can come in, brand, grab uh, brand new properties. You can type anything you want into here. You can change the unit systems um, up through here. Um, there are also going to be uh, different types of models. So most linear elastic isotropic, that's what's going to set um, and that just means the materials are going to be act linearly, um, so they're not going to have, you really need to work, um, be using materials before yield. Um, but you can also, this isotropic means that the material, the properties are the same in all directions. So if you wanted something like wood, you need to go to orthotropic, orthotropic since it has different material properties in different um, directions here. So there's other types of model types you can use here. Um, if you need things to change by um, temperature or anything like that, then you can go ahead and put that information in there as well. Uh, but one thing I just want to mention here is that if you have a material and it's really close to what you're looking for and you just want to be able to adjust these values, uh, you can go ahead and just copy and paste. So I can right click copy on a material I can paste it into my new library here, and then it becomes immediately editable. So this is probably the most, uh, the easiest way to do this, um, just tweaking materials that already exist in the SOLIDWORKS library. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Just wanted everyone to be able uh, to know those are options in there. Um, one last thing 
if you are looking for material properties, probably uh, this website, Matt Web, um, is a good first place to, to search for. So it has a lot of material information um, and a lot of different types of materials so that you can help you out getting kind of a more specific one. Uh, once again, that's if you do not have uh, specific vendor information. Okay, thank you very much for watching this uh, video here. Uh, don't forget you can subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, our blog, um, and thank you very much for watching.